Well, hello there, bear bull traders and random people probably who found this video on YouTube. We're going to go over the hotkey calculator configurator that everybody's been asking for a video for, and I know this is long overdue. It's been on my to-do list, and I keep forgetting about doing it, but I just finished up the latest version that's going out with this video, and hopefully if I can do this without a whole lot of editing, this will go out immediately after filming or recording, whatever you want to call it. So, to start out, you got your typical disclaimer here. I'm not going to put it up on the screen, but trading is risky. Using this hotkey may cause you to lose all your money. It may do things that you don't expect. I recommend that you always test it in simulator for at least a week or two. You know, get a lot of trades under your belt so you learn all the intricacies of it. And that way you know I cannot be held accountable. You're doing this at your own risk. So, this video will help you build your knowledge base around it. And how it works but actual usage is all on you so remember that now going forward let's say that you downloaded the excel file that you found on the thread on bearable traders forums you've got you pop that open in the configuration and you get this and you're like oh you know what does all this mean we're going to go through each one of these step by step and i'm going to kind of explain it and also in the disclaimer, just side note, in the disclaimer, I'm going to put a list of time codes so you can skip to where you want. If you want to skip certain things, maybe you know this, so you want to skip to an example or whatever. Whatever, it'll be in the disclaimer and the time code, and also probably get posted in the thread as well. So first things up, get this screen. This is your first screen that you should get by default. You'll have your count leverage here. That's the first option here. Count leverage is essentially the way DAS calculates the BP function, which is short for buying power. It's not actually your buying power. So when you do a BP variable in a hotkey, it's not saying, oh, I have a $100,000 buying power, 100000 It's actually taking the last price of the stock in the symbol and comparing it to the buying power and giving you a share total. That share total is your buying power in shares. So that's the maximum that you can afford with $100,000, your maximum shares. Now, because it's using the full 100,000 buying power, that's usually inaccurate if the stock's moving up and down. So you have to kind of reverse engineer that for some of these calculations. So the count leverage is normal for US is four. You might set this to six. You have plenty of options. You can also double click this and type in whatever you want. Just make sure it's a single digit int integer, uh, whatever your broker gives you. If you happen to be an IB user, and we've seen a few, I've had a few users mention this, that has different short margin versus long margin. Maybe you have four to one, and you have three to one for short and four to one for long. You'd want to set that you want to have, I'd say, copy paste your spreadsheet, and then set up a second one that has like three to one margin for your short. That way you don't, you basically handle that situation because you're going to have slightly different calculations for both. You're not trying to use four to one margin calculations on a three to one, uh, you know, margin short position. But by default, it's four. That's what most U.S. brokers will use. Some, you know, overseas brokers or out, out of the state brokers are uh, going to be six to one. Max account risk. This is the maximum that you are willing to risk on any one trade. So to give you an example, if you have a 25K, this is based on equity, I should say. Preface that. So we're not using 100,000, we're using 25,000 equity here. So if this is 25,000 equity, we're using 100,000, we're not going to use the 100,000 part, we're going to use 25,000. So 1% is going to be 250. 2%, which is what Andrew mentions in some of his books, and his maximum risk per trade would be, is going to be $500. So that means you're willing to risk $500 if it was to completely just drop from your entry through your stop and you got out, your risk was $500. That's what you're willing to lose on any single trade. So I usually just set this at 1%. It's used for some of the calculations, but if you're doing the dollar risk version, which is the version I recommend, and we'll go over both versions, then you kind of don't have to worry about that as much. These are just, these purple fields are basically just giving you examples of what you're setting. So four to one, if we were to set this to say three to one margin, it shows you that your total buying power off this amount is going to be $75,000. Percent equity to both total bond powers, 33%. That's just giving you another way of seeing it. You know, it's, these are just values to help you that aren't actually used in the equation. 
the percent of total buying power that you can change, yellow is usually a changeable field, just so you know, is 97%. Now this, you might be saying, well, why not just use the whole 100%? I use 97%, you can set this to like 98, 94, 93. This is the amount that we're gonna calculate off of. So instead of calculating off the whole 100,000, we're gonna calculate off 97,000. The reason for that is we wanna give ourselves a little bit of buffer in case that stock price moves by the time the hockey fires and the time that it gets to market and you get filled. Otherwise, if you overrun your full your full potential, you're gonna get rejected, you're not actually gonna get filled and you're gonna miss out on the trade probably. So I always give it a little buffer, you know, 3% has worked. I, I've never been rejected with 3% coming off. So 97% is a good value to have. Uh, to keep that in mind, send and load. Send is basically it's gonna go from your hotkey button all the way through into the market. Load is essentially it's gonna go from your hotkey button all the way into your montage and then you could press enter on your keyboard to send it or you could just look at the values in the montage and see what it's doing. That's good for testing. If you're, you know, obviously if it's similar, you can do either or because you're just gonna create, you know, fake orders anyway. Route is, you know, these are your different routes you can drop. If you need a few different ones, you can email me and I'll try and add it. Or you can also add values via some of these different uh, columns here, which set up those drop down lists. Order bid offset is going to be the percent of limit order you want to do, not the percent, I should say, the, the cents or the price of limit order that you want to do in the, essentially to fill me up to this amount. So if you set this to 10, you're doing, okay, my limit order is the ask plus 10 cents. So fill me between the ask and the ask plus 10 cents. So a $10 ask, you'd be saying, fill me $10 to 1010, anything in between there. If it goes over 1010, stop filling me or don't complete the fill. That's essentially what you're saying. You got your time in force right here. It's just all different versions. Again, you can add those in the list values. Default shares is I just like to set it to a default value. So we just put it back. So we're gonna change that in one of the calculations. And this is just essentially what you want it to be. So it just goes set back at the end of the hotkey. Minimum stop buffer is another, it's a stop distance, essentially a, a safety net to, it's added to the stop distance calculations. So a 20 cent stop distance calculation would be become 21 cents. It basically helps with fill slippage and also protects against some issues where if you happen to put double click on the price that it's currently at. It's gonna help you protect you there a little bit. You can, I usually use one cent. You can use whatever you want. But again, you know, defaults are usually what recommended values I have. Now this will probably in the recommended one, uh, in the version you get will be false. If you wanna add a send a trigger stop trigger order, you go true. And then you do have options for market and limit. I recommend market just because limit has a, a lot of risk because if a stock runs your stop real quick, it could jump your limit get your limit area, and essentially you want to be filled, and then you're really up, should, up up the creek, we'll say. I won't swear there, but we'll say you're up the creek. Stop order distance is the same as this, except it's for the stop order that's getting sent in. So 30 cents would be, you're gonna fill me between the stop trigger and up to 30 cents below it. That's only really applicable if you're doing a, a limit order market order it doesn't really matter we it, just leave it day plus is again this version for the stop order stop order price offset is going to be the stop order version of the order bid ask offset essentially it's just another safety net buffer now you can have this little brief example down here but i've also put together a few other things on here you have troubleshooting this gives you general ideas of what you know what's wrong possibly you know, if something happens, like for example, hotkeys do nothing. European users that have European version Excel, the hotkeys will not work by nature, just out of the box, because this is made with a US version of Excel. And your version is going to change all the dots, basically all the, the delimiters from a period to a comma, which DAS only wants a period because it's a US company. They don't, they don't factor in commas. So you have to basically do a find replace to replace those, but that's noted in here. You know, if you need extra help, you can just post in the thread and I'll try and help. Otherwise someone may have already fixed it. Uh, we have some new examples we'll go over in a second. Special notes are just special notes for certain hotkeys. You can, you'll, you'll say, go to special notes tab. This is that. Change log is obviously the change log. You have your values that you, 
that are basically the default for the drop downs. These new examples I put together are going to try and simplify this. This this whole hotkey, I will admit that when I made it, I look back at having what I made and the the monstrosity that it is, and trying to utilize, trying to basically fit this entire equation right here into a very limited amount of memory areas that we can write to without completely breaking the program. And this is my workaround, so it's not a pretty hotkey. You will be confused by looking at what it gives you. For example, this is what it could give you right here. And a lot of people, users will probably be turned off with that and say, oh, you know, I don't know what this thing's doing. This is going to try and help you understand. Essentially, the bare bare bones of it is we're doing this. We're doing a min-max equation. We want the minimum value between these two. The max shares affordable and the, the max shares to fit the risk. Whatever's lower, we want. Because basically, if, if your risk is going to have more shares than you can afford, then we'll just go with the max affordable. Your risk will be lower than what you, you originally wanted, but you can actually afford this and you'll get filled. Otherwise, if you don't do this and your risk is more than you can afford, for your shares, you will get rejected. And again, you have a chance of missing out on a trade. So we're basically doing this equation in DAS by moving things around, basically trying to remember that circle game, but like musical chairs, essentially. Musical chairs is what it is. We're moving values around to do things that they weren't intended to do just so we can get a value. Because we don't have access to functions in DAS. We don't have absolute value. We don't have a min or a max function. We're missing a lot of stuff. We don't have access to directly the equity value. We have to reverse engineer everything. So for this example, we're going to do equity percentage. Say that you went long in a stock. The price at the entry time was $20.20. Stop price where you double click the chart, and we'll go over that in more detailed examples within DAS, is 1998. So your stop distance is essentially 22 cents away. So we need to factor in. What is 22 cents away? How many shares is that to fill these? Your account leverage is four. You have equity of 25K. These are basically the default values. Max account risk per trade is 1%. Calculated buying power is 100,000. Total percent of buying power that we're going to use is 97%. So 97,000 on this is basically. Your order bid ask offset setting is set to 5 cents. Your minimum stop buffer is set to 1 cent. Your stop order price buffer is set to 1%. And then this is how it works. Now you can read this when you have time, when you get to this page, if you look at it. I've tried to color code these with these and to follow down, I'm gonna try and do it with the mouse as well as we follow through this. So the first part of the strip is if you happen to have a stop price set, you want it to send a stop order in, it's going to set your stop price as the price. Now that's confusing. You see in the hotkey, it might say price. That's not the price of the stock. That's the price where you double clicked, the priced variable. So these usually reference a variable that, and you often don't know what the name of that variable is, but that's where we're getting that data. So the price variable is your double click. So that's going to be 1998 minus our offset, which is right here, 01, which gives us a calculated value of 1997. That's what we're going to calculate our risk off of. That's our stop. Say if it hits that number, we're basically bailing out. So it's actually going to be 23 cents. So the first set we do is the BP variable data and not the buying power dollar amount. It's the shares afforded at the last price. That's just a note. Maximum shares DAS expects you to be able to afford. So buying power calculated and reverse engineered, keeping this in mind, would be 4,802 times 97% would be 4,802. That's actually what this is right here. Buying power is going to be based off of this. I may have fudge the examples on some of these because I changed a lot of this stuff so that this updates if you change. Like say if you were to change, I think that will do it. Yeah, it'll update. So some of these maybe the examples may not exactly match, but you'll get the general idea. So then we have the dev share variable is set to this value right here. Keep that in mind. Next thing we do is we calculate within the share variable. A dev share, this value right here, times 0.25%. That's a reverse on the equity because we're four to one margin. So four to one, you know, four or one divided by four is going to be 0 0.25. Price is our double clicked price, our original one, not our recalculated one, 1998 times 0 0.1, because we're only willing to risk 1% of our count. So that whole equation gets you to 40, calculated maximum dollar risk per trade. 
So 1% of 25,000 times 97% is going to be $240. That's the maximum we're willing to risk on a trade. So now that you understand that, that's your share variable. That's what that's been set to. The exam, we go down here. Now we're going to play with the price variable. We're going to go ask minus the price. This is again where we double clicked on the chart plus 0 0.01. That's our stop offset. So 20.20 20 here minus 19.98 plus 0 0.1 buffer equals 0 0.23. So that's our stop distance. That's essentially what we're factoring the distance between our stop our stop target and our basically our entry point when this was calculated it's going to calculate up the ask for long and then we go down here to our s share variable another one so share divided by price share is going to be this value so 240 price is going to be this variable this value 0 0.23 that becomes 1043 these are the calculate shares afforded at percent equity risk it returns the total shares of the percent equity risk. So these are the shares that you can, can buy the maximum for this much risk, $240 risk. Then we go down here and now we go share, default share, which is this value up here, 4802, and S share, which is now this value, equals this. So we're now we're within this function right here. Calculate A, blah, blah, blah. So then we go down here, we do the other portion of this, this function default share is now going to be set to default share so it's getting the value before it resets it so default share is going to be again 4802 plus 1043 gets us that so essentially the plus portion if you break this down right here then we go to s share and we're simply going to move s share to the share so 3759 and now we're going to do another step and we go we're going to use the S share variable again to calculate something. We go S share, this value minus this value, which is this part of the equation, equals this. So now we go down here and we're going to calculate 0 0.5 times. That's a, a bad, I'll type fix that. I, it should be this, I think. So we'll just fix that while we're here as an example. That is going to be this. The final calculation. So, can we afford it? Meaning, can we afford our total risk on this? Yes. R is smaller than MA. RS is smaller than MA. We can afford the full order at our at our dollar risk. Shares purchased is 1,043. It's the full load. Dollar risk is actually 239.86 if these values were to be fixed. Withheld buying power is 21,065. Blah blah blah. And then down here is just an example of how it flows through the the trigger order and the stop price. You know, you, it just gives you an example. You don't really have to pay attention. It's basically the same thing. It's just not it's not doing all this higher calculation. It's just setting up your trigger order with the variables. Now the one this is based on the account equity risk. So if you want to say I want to risk one percent every time I hit that button, keep in mind that if you're in a trade, your withheld buying power will be lower. So if you have twenty thousand locked up in a trade your buying power would be you know, 97% of, say, 80,000. So every time you, it would be 1% of that value, not 1% of the entire value. So that way you can keep entering. It's going to keep getting slightly smaller, but just keep that in mind. This is the one I recommend. It is the, the dollar risk. It's the one I use. The way I do it is I just once a week, or once a month, I recalculate what 1% would be for my account and then say, okay, that comes out to 500. Maybe I only want to risk half a percent. That comes out to this. And then I just plug it into my hotkeys and set them that way. I only use two long or short hotkeys. I have a half position and a full position. That's all I use. But there is room in the hotkey configurators so you can have, you know, I think that I give you five spots each. And then you could just, you know, probably expand from there same thing same setup it goes through all this it takes out a section here it's actually slightly less convoluted we don't do this part we essentially just skip actually i think it's we don't do this part because we already know we already know this value we're setting it at say we want to have a 150 dollar risk hotkey the dollar risk version 
we're setting this. We're not, we don't have to calculate this. We're just setting that. So it takes that out because you don't need it. So as we flow through, we'll just flow through real quickly. 4950 buying power. See, I think I corrected this one. I didn't correct the last, the other version. It becomes 4802 with 97%. That's share size. Keep that in mind. Example, you know, 2020, blah, blah, 023. $150 risk is what I want my hockey to be. That is set right here. That would be based off this, it'd be 652 shares that we'd need to purchase to reach that risk. Then we flow down here, we got 4802, this value. This value equals this. This value plus this value equals this. So you see, we're gonna we're doing this part. We're doing this part. And then we're gonna calculate the absolute value. So we have to flip it because when you flip, basically when you move it in DAS, it actually drops the sign. So some of these may be negative in certain situations. It drops the sign. So that way we get a positive. It's a little trick we're using in memory to be able to get the absolute value without actually having an absolute value uh, function. So we flip it if it if it was negative. So then we go back and we calculate this, find the bigger one, calculate these, this value right here. And then we're back to 652. So we can afford the full load again. Boom. And 652, $150 risk, 13,000 withheld. Same thing down here, all the way through. So now that you know the example, you're probably falling asleep. Your eyes are probably glossed over. We're gonna go into the hotkeys real quick and then we'll jump into some examples. So this is the hotkeys that where you configure yours. These are all based off of what you set on the first page. Now, this is your equity risk hotkeys. I give you various versions. Say you want to do 100%. So you want to do the full equity. 100, if you do 1% equity risk per trade and you set this to 100%, you're using the full 1%. If you do 50% right here, you're using half of the 1%. So that's what this is basically showing you. This is just an example just to show you, you know, 80% of the 1% is 80. It's a way for you to do half sizes or whatever. And this is what we're factoring the dollar risk off of essentially what your equity is. So you'd be $250 risk, $125 risk, essentially. You can, if you need more spots, you can drop this, you have drop downs. A new to this version is the short SSR. So if you need a short in DAS SIM, I think interactive brokers will actually do this for you automatically. So you may not need this, but for DAS simulator, it doesn't do this automatically. I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's just a design that they didn't think through on that particular feature, but you have to click and go short SSR and it'll flip one of those. So that way you actually get filled. You don't get rejected because it puts it on the opposite side, which fulfills the SSR requirement. This is the version I recommend. You do dollar risk. So you could you could use the drop down or just punch in a value. Say you want to do, uh, I want to do, I want to risk $120 each trade. And then again, you could do, you could calculate your own half sizes here. Same thing long, short SSR, drop down, all that good stuff. To use these, you'd simply click this column here, you click the one you want, you do control C, copy, or I think you can do right click copy as well. You go to your DAS hotkeys and you paste it in. Same thing, that's how all these work, it's usually the hotkeys, that's the one you're gonna wanna select and copy. You wanna make sure you select the result of the calculation and not this, because this won't work. This is just how we're putting it all together and making it easier to maintain. Scale in position percent is basically, if you were to say you entered a trade and the, the trade pulls back and you decide, you know, I want to I want to add to it. The percent is going to be the percent of your current position. So 100 percent means that if your current position is a thousand shares, you're going to jump to 2000 shares. Now, your risk won't double if it's been pulling back because you're getting in a better price, but your shares will double. That's what percent scale in means. Those are your hotkeys for that. Scale in additional risk is just like the dollar risk version. Say you want to scale in, it pulls back and you say, you know what, I'm willing to put in an additional $20 risk. So my original risk is 150, I'm willing to go to 170. It'll recalculate off the value that it was set and give you the shares to fill that $20 risk. So whatever it calculates that out as, you could end up more than double your, depending on how close it is to your original stop, more than double, but your risk would only be additional 20. Now this is gonna be slightly less because this uses a little bit more safety net. So this might actually be $18 or whatever it calculates out to, but that way you know. So that way I use this version just because I wanna know when I'm risking additional risk. So when it pulls back, when I hit that button, I don't want some random number 
adding to that risk could be 15, it could be 40, whatever I happen to hit the button at. So this allows me to know, okay, you know what, I'm putting an additional $20 risk on the table, you know, because I think this is going to pop and I'm willing to buy in at this lower price. That way, you know, that's a key thing. I just added this in this version. I think this was in the last version. So this is the one I recommend. This is the one I, I use going down here. Now your scale out, these are just like the scale up buttons you use. It just lets you to configure it hundred percent, 50 percent. Andrews, I think is recently switched to 10 percent. That's what he uses now. You have all these down here. Your price target. This is new to this version. I believe someone requested it. So I added it. Say you want to do a price target at 20. You want to sell 25 percent just like this. 25 percent at 1.25 distance in R and your position is short. This will send an order in and will put you at, you'll put a limit order at 1.25 R away. So if you have a 20 cent stop distance, that's your R, that's one R, 20 cents. You're gonna be at 1.25, so that's gonna be what, 25 cents? So it's gonna put it at the opposite side, so you're willing to sell 25% there. It's just a way to quickly put those price targets in, otherwise you can do it manually. And I have a tool that I'll show you real quick that actually lets you project that onto the chart so you can see where it's at in your your risk reward items. We'll go over that in the other part of the video. The range order is basically kind of like the price target. It just sets it in both versions, sets it in both directions. So it'll actually set a range order with your stop and your price target and saying, you know what? I think it's gonna go to 1.5 of my risk. I am confident. Just feel me 100% either direction, either I lose or I win, I'm walking away, set your range order. Down here are some extras that we have. Some of these do require, like the wide margin zooms, do require the newer versions of DAS, which is 5.4.3 is I think the public version. So that's the version that adds some of these. Set stop to break even long. That's if you're long, and you have a limit or a market order, you can cancel all, this will cancel all your open orders. So if you have limit orders for price targets, it's gonna cancel those as well. So you may choose to drop that, but you have to remember to drop the, the original stop order as well if you're using it. But that's gonna set you to break even long. Stop set to break even short. Same thing, opposite direction. Set to break even bi-directional. This is market orders only. So if your stop, it's your, these are your stop orders. If your stop order is a market version, which is what I recommend, It'll work in both directions. It'll set it at, directly at your price. You have one hotkey, and that's it. That's up to you how you want to use it. I have more. I like using these because it gives you a little more leeway. Like I have mine set to be break even plus like two cents, so that way if it gets run real quickly, I'm more likely to get out at the break even price and not like two cents below or so. You know, just keep that in mind. Update price is going to update the price in the the montage for your stop. And same with short. We'll go over these as well with examples. Update position is long replace. It's gonna basically send a replace order for the position because as you're limiting out, if you have a physical stop, you have to stay on top of your stop order because it doesn't do it automatically. So you wanna make sure if you sell, if you have 200 shares and you sell 100 shares, you wanna make sure that you update that stop. Otherwise, you'll end up flipping your position if that stop gets hit. So these ones, zoom Y out margin increase, we'll go over these real quick, but this is your config value, so 10%, you wanna zoom 10% in, it creates the hotkey. Your maximum, I think, is 19% because it'll you'll overrun the command buffer at that point, and it'll just get lopped off. Uh, zoom out to 118%, this is a little workaround we do, so we can go up to 118%, and then you have to start slamming this button. Uh, margin decrease, same thing as this, but in reverse. Margin reset to default, whatever reset that de default value you want, I think default and DAS from the way it comes is 3%. I use something like 49% because I like to see what's ahead. It kind of just crunch it down a little bit, but I use these buttons effectively. So now that we've gone through all of this, we'll start working some examples.